you know, and this is sad because we don't even take time to grieve our people, you know, because once we've finished grieving, another person is dead. Every year, more and more people are dying of opioid overdoses in Canada. That's happening even in my city, in Montreal. And although Quebec doesn't have as many overdoses per year compared to other provinces, such as British Columbia or Ontario, this affects every single one of us. I want to know what we can do to stay safe when we have an increase in fentanyl in our drug supply. I want to know how we can stop this trend. And I'm going to speak to the people on the front lines of this crisis. Yamin Weiss is a third year social work student at McGill, who is also a user in active recovery after his partner of five years passed away from intravenous drug use. Using the more unfortunate parts of my story to empower others and empower myself and uh, using that to solidify my own recovery from drug addiction. I used clean needles when I was in active addiction, so my clean bill of health and my ability to be there for others now is directly related to the availability of harm reduction materials and recovery options in the city. So without those in place, I definitely wouldn't have the ability to do what I'm doing now, so that's why it's important for me to give back in this way. I'm now on my way to speak to Dr. Carol Marset, Chief of Public Health Montreal, who's going to speak to me about a harm reduction method new to Montreal, and that is supervised injection sites. I was responsible for the implementation of the supervised injection services in Montreal. I was involved since the beginning, at the beginning of 2000, so that took 15 years. Uh, to be able to implement all that. And the one big issue was to obtain the exemption from Health Canada that we need to uh, get to obtain to open the, a way that is legal because you know, services are a safe place to inject. It's under the supervision of qualified personnel, which include multidisciplinary team with uh, community workers, nurses coming from our department, and peers, and it's completely legal because of the exemption. The, the drug users that really need it because they are more at risk of overdoses, that the uh, attendance is growing, and a lot of services are, were given on place. You know, we have data showing that since June 2017 until May uh, 2019, we had one more than 1,400 persons that were registered in the service and we had more than 50,000 visits so which is great because on the first year we had 20,000 and last year 30,000 so it shows that it's growing. In 2018, 424 opioid related deaths were reported in Quebec. This is a significant increase from 2017 alone, where they experienced a reported 279 opioid related deaths. I spoke with Jean Francois Marie, the new director of Cactus Montreal, who is also once an active drug user. On top of being the director of Cactus, Jean Francois is also an active advocate against drug prohibition. In Quebec, we've never reached so such high levels of deaths, even if it's nothing comparable to Ontario or British Columbia or Alberta. Still, that's never seen before. Like every month, at least, we have one death in our circles, and we're getting used to it, you know. And this is sad because we don't even take time to grieve our people, you know, because once we've finished grieving, another person is dead. After 
was speaking with Dr. Marcet and Jean-Francois, I had the opportunity to look inside of an injection site myself. So I took a trip to Cactus. When I got there, I understood the process a lot better. So basically how it works is first, a user will come to the site, they'll state which drug they're using along with a nickname. Once a room is available, they'll go inside and they will use the facility. There are two nurses on site at all time along with two peers. One thing I found interesting was the mirrors. So it's an unintrusive way for the nurses to watch the users in case of signs of an overdose. One example of this is if someone's lips turn blue. Obviously this isn't the only way and this isn't gonna happen to everyone. And then after that, the user can leave or they can choose to stay in a rest area until they calm down and that's the process. It's proven that it, it's uh, related and associated with less syringes in the public spaces, less death and overdoses in public spaces, and it helps the health network because that reduces, you know, the transportation to the emergency services. I'm here on the McGill University campus on my way to speak to Richard Davey to see his free naloxone tutorials, which he offers on a weekly to bi-weekly basis. At these tutorials, students will learn how to administer the antidote to opioids, and will receive a free naloxone kit. From being an academic and from studying drug use in his sociology classes, Richard decided that he wanted to make his own impact on the opioid crisis. Fentanyl is being increasingly cut into street drugs, and individuals need to be aware of that and have the means to test and also the means to help save themselves, save others, if if they were to get in a dangerous situation. This is a problem that can impact everybody. It's one of the big uh, takeaways from the trainings that I offer is people often think that this is an issue that impacts the other, someone who they can marginalize, uh, you know, someone down an alley shooting drugs. That is not what this is about at all. There are people who are using uh, drugs on the street. There are people that struggle with addiction. There are also people that take opioids for medication um, and they can potentially have an overdose if they take too much or they become addicted. Participants at the naloxone training learn about the rise of opioids in Canada, the sociological issues around drug prohibition and use, and learn how to administer Narcan and naloxone. Narcan is a nasal spray which once sprayed into the nostril can act as a temporary antidote to an opioid overdose. I don't believe enough has been done to actually help people have access to these type of trainings. I mean, there's a big organization that does it with the government, but you kind of have to be a group. It's not getting to necessarily the people that need it, you know. I'm, I'm trying to offer these to people on the street level, like us, you know, and that's who we need to be offering it to, um, not necessarily large groups, that's great. But I think the government can do a better job at offering trainings like these for people uh, and continuing with their awareness campaign which is something great that they've done uh, but definitely definitely more can be done. After the naloxone training I went to my local pharmacy in downtown Montreal to see how easy it was to get a naloxone kit for myself. When I got there they asked me who it was for which I thought was slightly questionable um, and then after I was given the kit but because I'm a Alberta resident and not a Quebec resident, I was unable to have the free kit. It was going to cost me $123.33 for the naloxone. Um, I think this is a huge problem because this pharmacy is right by Concordia and it just sucks that a school that has a lot of international students such as McGill, um, these students aren't going to be able to go to such a close resource. Even if they do have health care, it's only covered by the Quebec health insurance. So it took us 14 years to get them open. That's thousands of people who died of overdose during that time. Um, that's why, of course, we're happy to, have to see them open, but it's always with a bitter taste in the mouth. Actually, we don't live an opioid crisis. That's not what we're going through right now. 
we're going through a prohibition crisis. And it's actually our drug laws which are the problem. From all the harm reduction workers that I'd spoken to, there was one thing in common that all of them had said. And this is that there needs to be more compassion and more awareness about the sociological causes of drug addiction. Colonialism, sexuality, racial prejudices, these all hold significant impact on why one may use and why some communities are more vulnerable than others. The idea that it's a one-size-fits-all um, is the reason why I think that something like a supervised injection site is important. Um, if somebody is using unclean needles without skill, then they can get sick or die, and then they'll never have a chance of getting better. Um, it's not ideal that somebody is in a position where they feel the need to use, but being more realistic about the issue and less idealistic is a main reason why I think that supervised injection sites and harm reduction materials are important for the current climate of consumption in North America.